Some of the benefits you will get are 100% independent review. All right, thank you, let's go. Hello, I'm Karsten from Klembau and today I'll show you the fantastic idea Western Train Station Bookend by JM Bricklayer. Today we have a closer look at set 50001, the fantastic idea Western Train Station Bookend by JM Bricklayer. It belongs to the Civilization Industrial Times series. It contains about 1379 pieces and it's basically a bookend made out of bricks. If that works, you will find out later in this video. The recommended age for this set is 14 plus. Time to unpack the shipment, it's really coated in a lot of foil. This took quite a while. Let's have a look at the box. As you can see, my box got a little damaged from the shipment, however all the bricks are okay luckily. Let's open the box and see what's inside. First I need to break the seal. And as you can see, the box is extremely packed, with absolutely no space for air and I think considering the amount of bricks, the box is fairly small. Time for a closer look at what you get. Here you can see all the bags, the plates and the rails and the instructions. Luckily there is no sticker sheet falling out of the box. It is divided by four stages and the bags have a color coding. Unfortunately the color is not mentioned in the instructions, so to me this feels a little bit random. Still until the end of the build, I haven't figured out what those colors mean. So you could just ignore them. Let's browse through the instructions. The first page tells you about the bags, the axles, and how to use the part separator. On the next page you see the four stages. You build the first bookend in the first two stages, while the stand is the first stage and the train the second and then you repeat that pattern with bags from stage 3 and 4. Without any further introduction you get the instructions for the build. What I really like is that all the plates and tiles have the size printed next to it. A highlight to me is that they indicate when you have to use a stud with a hole. For other brands it is sometimes really hard to distinguish which version of the stud you should use. The previous step is always grayed out. You have a bunch of sub-builds every now and then. Most of the time, the instructions are pretty easy to follow, however I made some small mistakes during the build. The numbers are indicating the stage as well as the step. Unlike other brands, the number of the step resets when you enter a new stage. At the end you can see a picture of the final build. Then you can see some other sets JM Bricklayer offers. If you want to buy any set, you can use my affiliate link and you get 15% off. Just use the code Klembau15. You don't have any extra costs, but you support my channel and make videos like this possible. Thank you very much in advance. Alright, now you can accompany me building the first stage. It is my first set from JM Bricklayer, so I'm really curious how it feels. Then I present to you the set of the end of each stage and tell you my thoughts about the progress. I'll upload the full uncommented building video on my second channel, so if you want to take a closer look, you can enjoy it there. Independent of each stage, here are my first thoughts when I started. As you can see, we have no foreign colors. There is no need to hide pink bricks inside, everything matches. Also when it comes to the technical parts, everything just matches perfectly. You get all black pins and axles. You even get some golden gears, which is quite awesome. The set doesn't have any stickers and all parts are printed, however the instructions do not always reveal where to put them. The first stage took me about an hour to build. You have seven bags and really a lot of parts. Most of the time I was searching for parts. Especially some parts one searched for ages and I was a bit impatient, so I continued the build and looked later for that missing part. For the second stage I took only about 30 minutes and the last two stages took about an hour each. So I had a total building time of about three and a half hours, which is quite nice considering the amount of parts. The overall part quality was okay. I had some parts with too little friction and some parts with too much friction. I guess, if you consider this to be a display set, it's okay. Especially in stage 2 the parts looked pretty discarded with some scratches on, I also had one missing part. It felt like I got the Monday batch of stage 2. Now I leave you alone a bit until we look at the result of each stage.
All right, we have completed the first stage and I enjoyed it. I made a mistake in the beginning with the rails, but luckily, I noticed it quite early. The build itself varied a lot, so it doesn't get boring at any time. With all the gears you can also spin the green thing around. The back looks a bit boring, but this is intended as this is the place where I put the books later. The black axle, looking a bit out of the assembly, would be cooler if they would have used an axle with one length shorter. As you can see, if I turn this around, the green tube with the clouds on the top also spins. The other gears are just there for decoration and they don't have any function. And that's it. It was quite fun to build this and I think it looks pretty cool as I really love the steampunk theme. Next we continue building the railway carriage. This is by far the weakest part of this set. The construction is questionable. For the roof, they did not add any brick to make it more stable. The windows look quite cloudy and you really have to add a lot of windows to the frame. Since I missed a brick, I couldn't add the chair back. Inside the train you have this wonderful magic lamp used as a teapot. It offers only place for two persons, however the chairs are not designed for minifigures of any kind. The roof is unfortunately not detachable, which is a bit of a miss in my opinion. Also adding the roof is quite an undertaking. But this stage also has its positive side. The prints are awesome and I like the colors, the combination between dark green and gold looks fabulous. As a final step you add that to the previous assembly and now we have already completed half of the build. Let's turn around the bookend to have a quick look from each side. The third stage is the second bookend and it feels a bit simpler as the first one. Also it took me less time than the first one and I figured out why later in the process. The tunnel entry looks pretty much the same as the other one and here it felt a little bit repetitive. Also this side has a bunch of gears as well as a function. You get some pretty nice prints, they might look a bit random, but doesn't that fit good for the steampunk theme? The back looks almost the same and on the top we have some useless gears and a bunch of transparent parts. The big gear on the bottom has no function at all and is just for decoration purposes. The same applies for the two gears on the top. Adding the chains probably cost me a few years of my life, but when you use the lever, you can move the pistons on the top. It's a useless functionality, but somehow I like it pretty much. The last stage features the locomotive as well as you build the rest of the second bookend. This really confused me as you can always remove the entire train, why are some parts added after placing it on the build? Also after completing the train, it's kind of tiring to add all those small assemblies to the bookend. I think it would be better that adding the locomotive is really the last action of this stage. Building it was a painful experience for me. The whole assembly is really fragile and it happened to me a lot that when I added something, other things were falling off. You can get a pretty good impression of this if you have a look at my second channel. However, the build itself looks pretty cool. You have so many golden parts and even golden gears. That's the highest level of awesomeness. The construction of the roof was also much better than for the wagon. Inside you have this four unmotivated studs, this feels a bit unfinished. Removal of the train works perfectly. We have added this barrier that you can lower to deny entry to the tunnel. This works quite well. Alright, this is how the whole set looks without any books placed in the middle. I like the finished set pretty much. The two tunnel entries looked great with a lot of gears, pipes and adjusting wheels. The train fits perfectly in and has a great color scheme. I grabbed some books and placed them between the two bookends to visualize how it looks. As you can see, it holds the books in place and they are not moving at all. Of course, it takes some space and you might not place high books at the end since those parts are not 100% plain. Something really cool is that you can remove the steam train and the wagon. Both have magnets and you can combine them. The wagon has magnets on both sides so that you can add more wagons if you have some. The train is designed to be placed on any tracks, it has the standard width for stud trains. Let me summarize for you what I liked and what I didn't enjoy while building this set. First of all, the quality of the bricks, you need to accept that you don't get the best available quality of bricks, however I had no issues with color variations. The stages are too big, as you spend a lot of time searching for the bricks. 
For some people this might be a plus point, but personally I enjoy smaller chunks. I liked building the bookends, however building the train was not fully enjoyable to me. The locomotive was not very stable and the wagon was not designed perfectly and it had some scratches on the plates. Also I had some trouble distinguishing the black parts from the metallic dark grey parts. In total I had one part missing, I had no contact yet to experience how good the customer service works, but I will let you know in the future. Let's swap to the positive side of things. The build is very diversified. Throughout the almost 1400 parts, it never gets boring and there are almost no repetitive builds. You have only prints and no stickers at all. You also get a bunch of nice parts in unusual colors, like the golden gears for example. Talking about colors, you don't have any foreign colors hidden in this set and all parts are in appropriate colors, this also applies for the pins. You get a lot of metallic parts and a lot of golden parts. The design is pretty nice and additionally to the bookend, you get a workable train which is not fake built in. The price of $60 or €82 Euros is pretty awesome, considering what you get for it. You can buy it on jmbricklayer.com or on Amazon. Let me remind you once again about my affiliate link and the 15% discount code, which work on jmbricklayer.com. Thank you for watching and if you liked this review, give a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to Klembo.